Hello, everyone. Um, my name is John, and I'm a statistician. All right, you guys are like finally, <laughs> uh, right? So, um, so anyway, um, I would read you my title, but it would take all five minutes. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I am a statistician. I'm passionate about many things. I'm very interested in scientific communication. That's been a theme with some of the talks tonight. And when scientific communication goes wrong, I'm interested in knowing why. So we're going to look at that tonight. Let's get started. All right, so this is a, a graphic that appeared in Reuters in 2014. It was looking at gun deaths in Florida over a 20-year period. And uh, also in 2005 indicated when the stand your ground law went into effect. And if you look at this graph and interpret it as you would normally a graph, it looks like shortly after the law went into effect, there was a large drop in the number of gun deaths. But if you step back and look at it, the vertical axis is labeled backwards and there's actually a large increase in gun deaths, so something to think about. Here's an eye-catching headline. Some of you in the audience are probably like, finally, others are like, yes. Okay, so um, it's an eye-catching headline, and to be fair, this was picked up by many a media outlet, and uh, also the original article did caveat and said this is on a calorie-for-calorie -calorie basis. What it didn't tell you is if you were to actually make a BLT where the lettuce and bacon had equal environmental impacts, you need four slices of bacon and 34 cups of lettuce, okay? So that's quite a, a monster sandwich that only rabbits would be excited about. So, so when it comes to bad science reporting, who's to blame? Is it, is it the reporter? Is it the publication? Is it the scientist? Well, it could be all three of these, but I'd argue that if it is the scientist, that's a big problem. We should be clear on what we're doing. So this came out last year. This is a headline in the Washington Post that got picked up all over the blogosphere. It turns out parenthood is worse than divorce, unemployment, even the death of a partner. That's very shocking, isn't it? So um, that seems pretty extreme. And so from the Post article, they start detailing this research done by demographers who studied longitudinal data on Germans measuring their happiness over time on a scale from 1 to 10. And for those who had children, they looked at the happiness two years after the first child, compared to three years before. And they reported, on average, new parenthood led to a 1.4 unit drop in happiness. That's considered extremely severe. And on a 10-point scale, that, at a minimum, that would be 14%. That's a big drop. How do they contextualize this as very severe? Well, through a graph, of course, right? I mean, but what they showed was that this average drop after other life events, like divorce, unemployment, or death, they were all negative changes in happiness, but they were all of smaller magnitude. So I started thinking, I said, you know, what's going on with this? So I looked a little bit more, and one of the authors of the original study was reported uh, by a blogger and said, what do you think about this interpretation of your work? And as many people would do, they said, oh, we didn't mean that, you know, don't blame that on us, you know. Um, but it turns out, so I had to go get forensic, and I had to go get the original article. So I got the original article, it's long, it's verbose, it's technical. They do talk about drawing these waves of longitudinal data and measuring happiness after and before the birth. Here's what the Post said the researchers did. Here's one person in their five years of data. This represents birth. The Post says that the two happiness measurements after birth were averaged and compared to the average of the three measurements prior to birth. So, for example, this person experienced a slight increase in average happiness. But what the Post says is averaged across all 2,000 individuals, there was quite a large drop on average. But I read the article. And what the researchers actually did to get that negative 1.4 is they didn't do what I just showed you. They took, among the two measurements after birth, they took the smallest of the two and subtracted the largest of the three beforehand. So they did what? What did they do here? They ensured what? <laughs> that this difference at a maximum was zero and in many cases was negative. And then they presented that average across all 2,000 people. That's a little trickery there, isn't it? Um, so. You know, I started to wonder, how could the reporter get this wrong? And I actually worked through the paper, did some computations on my own. It was an error apparent. It was a little obfuscated. But if the Washington Post had correctly reported what the paper actually said about the average difference, it was on the order of negative 0.025, negligible given the amount of variation, and certainly smaller than these other three changes after the other events. By the way, none of these three were actually mentioned in the paper, so I'm still curious as to where those numbers came from. <laughs> So anyway, I got, 
I found the smoking gun. I was, how did, how did the reporter get this so wrong? You know, I mean, this paper is long, but that's their job, a science reporter. And I found a press release about this paper. And I won't bore you with rereading this because you've already seen it, but the verbiage from the study authors was exactly what was picked up by the Post reporter. So why would the authors mislead everyone about the results of their study? Well, this is going to go by quickly, but look at these two potential headlines. That's the first one. That's sexy. That's exciting. The second one is, we don't know what caused this drop. <laughs> you know, that's not a very exciting thing. So to wrap this up, these things are called puritos, by the way, I found out. Um, <laughs> to wrap this up, we as scientists need to be a little bit more, uh, I really want to ensure that we're transparent in getting the message out to be passed on to everyone else. So thank you for your time. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you. <laughs>